What's going on today, everybody? Uh, so today I'm doing my first oil change on the car. I've got the oil out of it, and I'm, this is my first. It's conventional just to get all the gunk and junk out of the engine and kind of catch that preliminary, um, all those shavings, because it's undoubtedly going to have shavings in the first probably three to four um, oil changes. When I was changing the oil, you always want to watch how it comes out. I saw two clumps come out, and I'm not sure what they were, whether they were, whether they were sludge or maybe some of the grease um, uh, pieces that we had up on the valve train. So I'm, well, I'm going to take a magnet through and see if I can pick up any metal. Because it's fine if it's grease, if they're grease clumps, but it's not okay if they're metal clumps. Metal clumps are bad. Something broke. So I'm going to show you a little trick on how I go about sifting through my oil to look for chunks well here you go here's the secret plastic bag magnet now you could go through and just sift the magnet through the oil and you can see that there's it's a little bit clunky got a bunch of chunks in it but you could do it with the magnet and then you'd have to clean the magnet off so what you do is you take a bag and then you wrap it around the magnet and that makes it easier to get rid of all the gunk that gets stuck to the magnet. Well, after rooting around for a little bit, this is the chunk that I found. So I did see something come out of that engine. What it is, I have no clue, but it's a little shaving of something. I guess if it's magnetic though, it's all metal. So it's metal, not aluminum. And look at how clean the magnet is. Didn't even get dirty. Here's the bag. And the bag has some little um, particles still on it here and there. But that was the only chunk that I could find. I'm going to drain this now into another bucket, a clear one. And then I'll run this magnet along the outside and kind of swish it around so I can pull the magnet and pull the stuff to the side. Hopefully that will uh, help with that. But that's how I keep my magnets clean with just a simple baggie. What works really, really well is if you've got nitrite gloves. You put a finger this in one of the fingers and then you just start going around. And if you happen to tear a hole in it, you just move on to another finger instead of getting a whole other bag. So nitrate gloves work really well and it works really good if you have like a little little magnet because then you can just stick it in that and grab like a Allen wrench or whatever to stick to it and move it around but works really good. I like to use these just I would say a normal magnet rather than a neodymium, a rare earth because in here all that swirl is all metal shavings. And if you had neodymium, it would pull all those little metal shavings out of the oil a lot easier. So this is effectively not as, as strong, but it picks up the big particles that we're looking for. Cool. Well, that's my little how-to, how-I-do type of deal on uh, oils. Always watch your oil coming out, at least the first bit, because... Once it starts to, it, the first bit will be super strong, and you can kind of see chunks. Have a flashlight, and you can kind of see chunks, but once it gets really slow, you can really see when a chunk um, messes up the stream. So that's how I noticed that I needed to go uh, look in this. You can make it a habit to go through your oil, but generally I don't. I mean, I'll have it in clear containers for a while and look at them before I put it out and get rid of the oil, but... For the most part, if you notice something come in, then you know you have something to look for. If you just undo it, walk away, and let your oil drain, then you don't really know that there's a problem. Especially with a refresh, you want to be always watching to see what comes out. Because you could have a really big problem. Like that chunk, that's a pretty serious chunk. So I don't know what it would have came from metal wise so i have to think on that maybe we'll figure something out i didn't hear any big chunks 
Hopefully it'll be all right. Okay, well, I'm going to keep sifting through this, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. One thing that's a very, very, very good idea is to clean out the oil container that you're going to hold it in before you start undoing the oil. I forgot to do that, unfortunately. So, was that from my car? Was it not? I'm going to venture to say yes because I did see the, the blob come out. Two blobs, to be precise. But, it's a, it's a toss-up. It could be, it couldn't be. Venturing on the side that it is, but always clean it. That way you know 100% for sure this is it. This is the problem. This is from this car. All right, that's it. So I'm working on my wife's car now, doing the oil change in hers, and something that I wanted to bring up to you guys is always check to see if there is an oversized filter for your car. So the STI, I use AMSOIL for the STI, and AMSOIL recommends, I think it's EA1512 filter for it, but doing some research and looking at it, the EA1520, or 15EA20, I don't know how it is, but the last number 20 is the same exact filter, it's a little bit deeper and a little bit wider so it actually uses the full um, seal on the oil cooler for the STI it's I think it was like 60 or 70 percent bigger than the than the original or the one that AMS oil recommended it's always better to get a bigger filter than well you can't why wouldn't you clean more then why or why would you choose to clean less with a smaller filter when you could clean more with a bigger filter for the same price the pro, uh my wife's car is a prime example for that her her car or the when you look it up she I use Wix filters on hers when you look it up in the book it recommends a 57060 for the filter but a 57045, I think it is, is the same exact filter, but it's like an inch taller, maybe even an inch and a half taller. So you've got an inch and a half extra of filter fabric in there for the same price. Why wouldn't you upgrade your filter to a longer filter and have a better chance of catching stuff? And technically it could go a little bit longer because you have more filter. We don't run it any longer. But it's a prime example of, of just thinking ahead and, and writing it down. That's the biggest thing. I forgot how many times, I couldn't even count how many times I've forgotten what the STI one was called and had to look it up. And it's a fight to try to figure it out. There's a couple online places where you can look and I might try to link them down below. So I think it's like oversizedfilter.com com or dot net something like that but you can look across all the brands and see what filter is the same because all it is is thread pitch and gasket diameter that's the real two main factors that really well i guess size how how much area you have but like the sti is i've got a drop down i could have a almost a foot long filter on it but um those are the two main things you have to have your pitch size and your thread the right thread so it threads on there and then your gasket has to fit on the mating surface for your oil those are two main things three size three things that you have to know and this online thing goes through and somebody's already done all the research most of the research there's still a couple that i've found that i i use differently my dodge i used to have one um that wasn't on there uh but yeah that's my i guess tidbit do some research. You can look and find a bigger filter. Definitely, before you purchase it, look at your old filter. Look at how it's in there. Maybe do an oil change with your old one to see how it comes on and off. If you have enough room to put a bigger one, if uh, if the diameter can't be any bigger, if it can be only a little bit bigger, if you need... like, Definitely take a look at it before you go looking into it, but this online place has a ton of stuff where you could actually look it up. So 
here's I'll show you a picture and show you a difference of what the two filters look like. So these are the two filters for my wife's car and as you can see it's got a lot more uh, media for it. They're about the same diameter I'll give them that. Uh, yeah I'd say they're pretty much exactly the same. There's a 22 printed on this one and a 22 print on that one so I'm gonna deduce that they're probably the same but the length alone is a no-brainer. This one will only catch a little bit and let some through and this will catch more. I don't know, just a little tidbit. Thought I'd get the, the word out there and uh, let you guys know that you don't have to use the exact filter that it has. Now, another thing to be aware of is synthetics will have different um, particle size that it will let through. But for the majority, if you use the same filter, they're the same. Like, this is the Wix. There's nothing special f uh, about them. There's not the Wix XP where it's the fancier one. I'm not using synthetic on her car, so I don't have to use a synthetic filter. But I think this was like three or four cents more than this one. It's, it's a no-brainer to me.